Hitler. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's okay. I'd like to call this part four meeting for Tuesday, June 4, 2024 to order. First item on tonight's agenda is the approval of the May 21st meet, um, meeting minutes. Brandon, uh, can't talk about that. Board members should have received a copy of those minutes in their packets. Does anybody have any additions or questions? Okay, near, hearing none, I need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. We're moved by Mr. Burton, second by Mr. Beecher. All those in favor? Mr. Beecher? Aye. Mr. Burton? Aye. Mr. Probst? Aye. Aye, and I also. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is the attorney's report. Carries. Uh, <clears throat> first item is a consideration of the use agreement with the community, Freeman Community High School to use the Freeman Students parking lot for their high school homecoming parade. Got any questions? Happy to answer. Same old, same old, right? Yeah. Just for a while. Okay. No issues, no problems. Questions or comments about this? I'm have fun. Absolutely. Hearing none, I need a motion to approve the use agreement with, uh, I'm assuming, the high school. Use of the Freedom Springs, Freedom Park parking lot for the homecoming. Right? So moved. I'll second that. Been moved by Mr. Dietrich, second by Mr. Post. All those in favor, Mr. Dietrich? Aye. Mr. Post? Aye. Mr. Burton? Aye. Aye and I also, Mr. Sears. Next item is a use agreement with the Michaels. Freedom Park Fields and Shelter for a baseball tournament for various states of September. Uh, looks like. Party is from September 20th to September 23rd. Uh, and it would be on similar multi multiple, multiple use fields uh, south of Slave Hill. We've had these tournaments here before uh, uh, several years. I think. I don't know if we did it last year. Uh, we, we are very familiar with this um, type of play. I think. So they don't, there's no ball diamond out there, so they use the multiple, the multi purpose field, right? Correct. Okay. And then yeah. do you guys have to align the fields for them and get that ready? I believe they're supposed to be field striking. Okay. Yes. And that's not an issue, Jim. No. Is there an issue with starting these games? Well, you know, they say 6 a.m. Is that just a general, we want it all day kind of thing? They don't start playing at 6 a.m. Um, usually after about 7.30. <laughs> oh, they start that early? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you, you guys their staff don't have an issue with it, I don't. Yeah, we don't. Okay. Is the 22nd off the table? Because it's not listed here. It's 20, 21, and 23. So the event that I'm getting is basically screenshots from a computer. Uh, I think it is supposed to, yeah, Heather is just saying, I think it is from yeah. the 20th to the 23rd. So it is inclusive of the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. They're going from Friday to Monday. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Here and then I need a motion to approve the use screen with Indy Edge beatball, baseball for use of the multi purpose fields at Freedom Park. So moved. I'll second that. So moved by Mr. Burton, second by Mr. Prost. All those in favor, Mr. Prost? Aye. Mr. Burton? Aye. Mr. Butcher? Aye. I'm Ryan also. Motion carries. I say with the use agreement with Greenwood Greater Midwest Sports Market uh, for. Rewind sports card for tournaments uh, fall 2024, spring 2025, fall 2025. Uh, so, we've been spending several months interviewing various tournament directors. Uh, we narrowed our search, uh, doing business as our own GMB. Uh, they're a travel baseball. Affiliate, uh, 
basically St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, they do have a network here in Indiana. Uh, they have some permits. Uh, they run out of Evansville. And then also they've got some staff members that live here just as close as Fishers as well. So they already have a pre-existing network here. Um, so after lengthy interviews with several tournament directors, uh, we did zero in on GMP and we, the structure for the use agreement goes through 2025 and is inclusive of the dates listed that's in the use agreement uh, that was required for you in September and October of 2024. Uh, and then we roll in the 2025 season starting in March. Uh, and then that goes uh, all the way uh, down to July uh, as well, okay, the 2025 season. And we'll determine uh, mid season 2025 what the fall will look like uh, for, for Midwest as well. Uh, the rates are there as well. Uh, we do have a prerequisite of 20% uh, softball uh, for a diversity standpoint. Off Ranch Park facility. Uh, we were confident with this uh, tournament director on uh, monetizing and populating uh, fields. I feel like they're a good, good partnership with us. Uh, they're, they're big Montreal West community first. Uh, they talked about uh, hosting tournaments and for the families, and the parents. Uh, so they're very, uh, very focused in on that. But like what we do here as a city, it, how they run their tournaments along very well. So happy to answer any, any questions or concerns you guys may have. Also, we uh, provided a GMP packet, an information packet. I hope you guys uh, received that. And it kind of gives kind of a, uh, a little bit of a syllabus on who uh, GMP is and how they perform. I have a question. Do uh, tournaments have to be would this include uh, local teams or these teams out of, out of state or out of city? It doesn't exclude anyone. Okay. Uh, so uh, GMB is basically uh, the tournament hosts. And if you elect uh, to play in a GMB tournament, uh, then you go to their website or their all Marines and you sign up for their tournaments. Uh, so it excludes no anyone, no one of any residents. Okay, very good. So is this, uh, first off, you obviously, you're comfortable with scheduling something in September this year as far as the opening and getting? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry to ask you that. <laughs> no, but the, but the reality of it is we have to have, we've got to, okay. we've got to start, we have to determine. You got to, you got to, yeah, you got to start walking sometime. We have to. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I wasn't trying to take you down, I was just. No, no, I appreciate that, that is a fair question that deserves an honest answer and it had to, we have to start circling a date on the calendar. Okay. Um, and is this is this strictly youth baseball as an adult softball girls? I mean do we know yet or is that gonna be Yeah it is it is youth sports. Okay. Fourteen and under for baseball. Okay. And then softball that he is partnering with Triple Crown. Okay. Um so he'll be subbing that out but running it from a GMB standpoint. Um, but he'll be part of the Triple Crown to fulfill that 20% of the softball. Uh, softball range, we, our fields and facilities don't have an age limit for, for that softball. So we don't have any age restrictions on that. But 14, uh, you and under is what we'll be able to host for travel baseball. And that'll be his primary focus. So when the weekends, the, the dates that they have these terms, do they send a representative in town? To be yes. actually physically present during these tournaments? Yes. And yes, that is what will happen. Okay. And that, that individual will then work with staff. Yeah. So we'll, we have a staff member now that'll be our liaison. They'll just basically be communicating any needs or wants that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, we also got maintenance aligned uh, uh, for specifically that facility. So if there's needs and wants that need to happen, uh, it is stated in there that they have to let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, like. Fencing has to be put up or faced have to be a certain distance. They have to let us know a certain period of time beforehand. So it gives us time for our maintenance staff to take care of that uh, leading up to that turn. Okay. Any other questions, comments, anything else? Okay, hearing none, need a motion to 
approve the use agreement with Greater Midwest Baseball for uh, one on term inside of the Greenwood Sports Park in uh, fall of this year and spring of next year. So moved. Second. Been moved by Mr. Burton, seconded by Mr. Dietrich. All those in favor, Mr. Burton? Aye. Mr. Dietrich? Aye. Mr. Prost? Aye. I and I also. Motion carries. Second, I say aye. Contract for services and payment with independent contract agreement with Justice Davenport Court to provide softball, 26 softball lessons for the field pumps. Have any attorney questions or concerns? Is this girls' fast pitch? This is the high school, high school coach. Okay. Okay. Is this taking the place of the instructor we lost? Yeah, he's moving to Iowa. He, he recommended her. Okay. She came in and met with us. And Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, any motion to approve the independent contractor agreement with Justin Davenport between our softball clinics at the Greenwood Fieldhouse? So moved. Second. Excuse me. Been moved by Mr. Dietrich, second by Mr. Prost. All those in favor, Mr. Prost? Aye. Mr. Dietrich? Aye. Mr. Burke? Uh, I know I also motion here. So. Next item is a purchase agreement with business art designs uh, with certain identity and wayfinding signage out of the uh, Greenwood Sports Park. Should have had a memorandum suggested motion language uh, supporting the special purchase. Some type of statements to the city as well as the determination letter as part of your year. Believe you sent out a packet with a um, quite detailed packet with uh, information about the signage at the sports park. Yep. Right. I saw it. Okay. Online. So, detailed. Very detailed. Yes. Well, I thought it looked great. This uh, company is also has done the vast majority of the city's yeah. weight finding system. Yeah. Uh, Character of the car uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Questions or comments? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve the purchase agreement with business art and design for signage at the Green Sports Park. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. It's on the, it's on the very last paragraph. My apologies. I move to determine that the purchasing that purchasing the identity and wayfinding signage as described and presented by Parks Director Rob Taggart from Business Art Designs will be at a governmental discount pursuant to Indiana Code 5-22-10 dash 12 and therefore provide substantial savings to a government body pursuant to Indiana code 5 dash 22 dash 10 dash 5 to authorize the purchase of identify identity and wayfinding signage in an amount not to exceed $95,000 from business arts design to authorize the mayor and the executive director of parks and recreation to sign any and all documents to effectuate the purpose, the purchase, with final terms and conditions for the purchase to be determined by the legal department and to direct that the special purchase determination be placed and maintained in a separate special purchase file. You have second that motion. I'll second. Again, it's been moved by Mr. Burton, second by Mr. Prost. All those in favor, Mr. Prost. Aye. Mr. Burton. Aye. Mr. Dietrich. Aye. I'm an aye also. Motion carries. Okay. So they do approve the contract now for business art. Now, is that the memorandum from standpoint? And now we need to actually approve the contract to purchase not to exceed 95 k No, that's that was now as well. Yeah, thank you.
I thought you had two wall walk out or something. We've got Christie's design all on that. You know, I can do it. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> who's, um, who's wayfinding signage? I'm sorry. Wayfinding signage? Yep. Is that the same? Is there? Are they the same as business art and signage? That's the description. Yeah, yeah. the description is wayfinding signs of uh, in the Green Sports Park. Uh, what we did different on this park, uh, we took all the vehicular scale and uh, kind of directory signs and put that in uh, business office coffers to do, uh, just because of uh, the repetition, reputation of what we have throughout the city that business art's done. When we internalized the signage, when we got into the park, we split all those out from a cost saving standpoint. And we had a local company do it, Christie's Art, uh, Christie's Design and Sign, provide us uh, a quote on that. So uh, with that said, um, the next quote is for Christie's. Uh, design and sign, and I believe you have those estimates as well. But the sir. signs remain cohesive. Hundred percent. Yeah. So the design of them all have all been done under one design standards, and those standards were shipped out to different vendors for prices. Questions or comments about this? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve <coughs> the purchase agreement with Christie's design and sign for signage at the Greenwood Sports Park. Sure. $10,063. Not to exceed $12,000. Second. We move by Mr. Burton, second by Mr. Dietrich. All those in favor? Mr. Burton? Aye. Mr. Dietrich? Aye. Aye. I'm I also. That motion carries. There, we got the uh, landscape structures next. Okay. Wait, yes, I'm sorry, that's the uh, amendment to the contract for landscape structures. Uh, the change in the Items we're purchasing, which increased the value of the cost of the contract to $39,572. That's all inclusive of shipping and the items. Brief for the ship, if you guys know this, so um, this is an addendum. The reason why it's an addendum is you already approved the original amount for $29,000. It's $10,000 more. And the reason being is I uh, went back and looked at the site and I wanted to differentiate a few of the furnishings from. The community park from the sports park. Uh, so the difference is, um, the, first off, the I'm not trying to get too much in the weeds of this, but we'll explain it. Uh, the play area, with the community park aspect, has what they call kaleidoscope benches, which were funded and uh, approved by the Parks Foundation, and those are the same benches that are down here at City Center Park. Uh, they have. Uh, in that series of the kaleidoscope series, they have trash receptacles as well. Um, that character will go really well uh, within that play area. So the kaleidoscope benches were added to fit the character of the play area uh, with, the, with that series of that kaleidoscope series, uh, which uh, uh, subtracted the amount of the normal tender top trash receptacle would be for the remainder of the park. Uh, the, the price increase due to Heavier material, more shipping, and it's a little bit more costly item for those tractors. Long explanation, but I thought it was deserving of it. Questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I need a motion to approve. <clears throat> sorry, motion to uh, approve the addendum to the contract for services for site amenities. Uh, from landscape structures for the Greenwood Sports Park. So moved. Second. Good move by Mr. Burton, second by Mr. Beecher. All those in favor, Mr. Beecher? Aye. Mr. Burton? Aye. Mr. Gross? Aye. I'm not also. Motion carries. I think that's that everything. Okay. Thank you very much.
Next on the agenda is Greenwood's uh, Park Foundation report. That's the report from the foundation. Happy to uh, answer any questions. Question's next item. Children's report. Right here tonight. Thank you. Uh, this went out this morning to you. Hopefully, you've had a chance to take a look. Uh, so, in your, your parks operating fund, this is the one that's funded with property taxes. Uh, so far this year, 776000 uh, I expect that the numbers on this one revenue wise will explode over the next couple of months as we start getting the Freedom Springs revenue plus the property taxes in. So right now it does look like we're outspending our uh, revenues, but that's going to change pretty quickly. And you still got 75% reserve in that fund, so there's there's nothing concerning there. Next fund is your food and beverage tax fund. Um, right now that is outspending revenue slightly. Uh, a lot of that's just due to timing on some of the service contracts. Um, I would also point out that in addition to the fund balance of 3.8 million, that's the cash balance. There's also a $2 million investment balance on that one. Uh, there's some CDs outstanding on that one. So uh, I don't have any concern that we've got spent so far this year. I think we'll, we'll end up back in line uh, before the year runs out. Next one is the SNR fund. Um, this is the one that kind of is all funded by the program type fees and uh, Obviously, right now we're running ahead by 387,000, but we're getting into summer camp time, so we'll start utilizing some of those funds. Uh, but generally, our goal with that one is to see it come back to even. Yeah, you know, that basically means our, our fees cover our costs. The final one is your park impact fee fund. Um, as you can see, we have spent down about half a million dollars of that one uh, this, so far this year. There's still one and a half million remaining in there in cash. Uh, that fund also has a CD outstanding for just over a million dollars that's maturing at the end of July. Uh, so that would, uh, we've got cash to fund whatever needs we have related to a sports park, pickleball, park, uh, whichever one we're doing out of that this uh, upcoming time. Questions or comments, Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. your time. From the agenda is the uh, aquatics report. Perfect here. How are you guys? Good. Good. Um, so uh, our first opening week um, was a little slow. We had some weather delays and things like that. Um, that's just the nature of the facility with it being outdoors. But that being said, even though it has been a little slow, um, it's kind of been a successful uh, first week. It's about giving us an opportunity to uh, train our staff in a little bit on those moments where we don't have a lot of people. It's worked really well in our admissions and concession side of things. Um, guards are doing a really good job on kind of maintaining their zones, things like that. So all of our staff are kind of uh, upkeeping up the facility to make sure that it's clean and ready to go. Um, we did start our first session of groups and lessons this week. Uh, for, uh, yesterday was the first day. It went really smooth, very well. Um, Lucas has done a really good job of organizing that and getting all our sub instructors ready to go for that. Um, and then our junior life, our program will start next week. Um, so we'll kind of start that back up. And that's just a way to kind of teach kids water safety practices earlier on. Um, so when they do become the age of 16, then we can hopefully pull them up and some greatest race and kind of teach them just life safety skills from there. So um, uh, other than that, things are going a little well. Our programs are kind of starting up. Um, so uh, we're just waiting for the sunshine to kind of come back out so we can have more fun. So. Yeah, see temperatures are dropping next week or later this week. Oh, so. are they? Yeah. yeah. Hurt our attendance too bad. Yeah, so we're working through it. Thank you very much. Yep. Appreciate it. Fresh report. I believe you've got a copy of my report. I think any questions you want to have to answer. No, I was, uh, went through the parks last week. Things look great. They really do. Appreciate all your staff's hard work. And can't get over how good. Obviously, we took a tour of the sports park last month. Can't wait to see that place open, but I kind of get over how great those pickleball courts are. And I'm uh, very anxious to see those open to the public. It's a, it's a great addition to the amenities you guys already have. So, when somebody wants to do a dedication tree, they contact you and then you recommend 
what kind of tree? And no, they, they contact Molly Shields. Okay. And, and yeah, the others describe right. certain trees, you know, different, certain parks. And you got a lot of them say, I want a <coughs> tree up the west side. And yeah. Just kind of guide them in the direction they need to be guided where, where you can go, what trees. I was going to ask you too, who are the volunteers that helped with the uh, flower planting? Uh, it, it actually was one lady who volunteered. She'd been online and got it for just from like last year. I told her to come back the next day. She had problem when she brought four of her friends. Okay. They were elderly. They were, they were older, um, retired people. <laughs> they dug holes just by the way. Same way I've seen us. Yeah, kind of like us. <laughs> so one quarter were volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they weren't wearing things. But we appreciate their uh, volunteering their time. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Jim? Thank you, sir. Trails? No, okay. Nothing for trails. <coughs> Recreation report. Uh, the copy of a report uh, we had Monday on Friday. I think we probably had over like 700 kids there between the two sessions. Uh, Saturday, for probably like the third or fourth time in my 18 years of being here, we actually had to cancel a concert because of the rain. Did you? Okay. So, uh, other than that, we have a uh, Jai Baker band this Saturday night, Jai. starting at 7 o'clock in the amphitheater. Summer camp started yesterday. I think we had 167 kids here yesterday. 165 today. Uh, then we have a bunch of different day camps uh, that are going on outside of summer camp that are being attended to build house and parks and stuff like that. Was your pickleball and pints? Was the attendance about? It's usually right around that 50 to. So 60 it's about where you expected. Yeah. Right? Great. That the truck went well again. Yep. The school bus was probably not liked by yeah, too well, many. It, you know, it wasn't as popular this year. The children don't like it at all. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> was it the... That was the only question. We didn't receive an email. The lady asked that. I'm more <laughs> confident if there's a school bus there. That's what she said. Was it the bus or the driver? It was the driver. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a, a lady this year? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know who they sent. Anything else from there? Thank you, sir. You'll have your report. Um, you guys have a copy of my report. Um, nothing, nothing crazy new going on at the field house. We just started training um, some new hires, training, still training. Uh, Michael Street, so I as a manager. Um, and then just kind of getting ready for summer camp. Like Nick said, we've got just shy of 200 kids in there every day. So um, started training today. So yeah, adjust and pivot and move all the kids in and kind of follow, follow them around the group kind of thing. <laughs> but um, we had two uh, cool events outside of our normal uh, daily programs last month with MIT Pest Control. They did an event and Employee Appreciation Day and then we had a sneaker expo. Um, that was pretty cool to kind of see those. Those are two new user groups that we've never had in the past. We've got uh, Johnson County, uh, Johnson County Community Foundation uh, event next Thursday. Numbers are up pretty much across the board. Yeah, I think this time last year. I think we're just going to kind of slowly see um, everyone just it, it uptaking. But you do see, if you look at the numbers, you do see the total members drop off uh, last year, and that was because that we opened in May of 2022. Mm -hmm. So we saw a lot of those people kind of coming back and renewing, which I thought was kind of cool. That slide numbers more than double. Yeah. FYI, I saw a picture of the sneaker expo. I'd love to see more events like that. <laughs> that was, I thought that was pretty uh, unique. Yeah. So. They had a good turnout. They said they would definitely be back. Good. Anything for John? Okay, thanks, sir. We need to send a report. Again, for the most part, numbers are. Yeah, memberships are way up. Yeah, that's great. Especially this time of year. Anything for Sharon? Okay, thanks, Sharon. Any other business from the public? 
Sure. So, uh, if, if, excuse me. If you don't mind, would you identify yourself? Yeah. Should I go over here? Just, just let Heather know. Yeah, yeah. My name is Tim Brady. Uh, I live on an on court over in Brighton States neighborhood. So uh, we're we're here because we went to the common council meeting yesterday, and they sent us here. We're we're uh, we have some concerns about the stop 18 extension through Freedom Park uh, over to Honey Creek Road. Now it looks like, according to the new comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. the previous comprehensive plan kind of had it cutting south on the cuts here. And uh, you know, I think most folks in our neighborhood are concerned. Uh, for a few reasons. There's all, always a lot of traffic on Honey Creek already. 35 mile hour speed limit on that road is uh, a suggestion at best, I would say, for most of our citizens. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's going to dump more traffic out onto that road. It's also going to put a pretty busy street right behind a lot of houses, very close proximity to those houses, from where we see it in the dotted line on the on the comprehensive plan. Um, you know, I just say, just in general, I mean, I haven't, I haven't come down to, to voice my opinion against it, but I use Freedom Park every every day to walk my dog. It's an amazing park. You guys do an incredible job maintaining it. I just hate to have a road cut through the middle of that park. It's just devastating to me. It's, like the, it's such a great place. It's calm. It's quiet. Kids are down there walking, and when you got a busy road uh, plowing through it, it's going to be it's going to be a, a bit bad anyway. That it may be too late. The ship may have already sailed on that. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure why the common council told us to come here, but but we're here to voice our opinion to say, you know, as a neighborhood, I think we, I think most of the folks that I've talked to are generally not in favor of having that road cut directly south of Barrington uh, Estates and, and go out to Honey Creek uh, there. It just seems like too many roads dumping traffic out onto a fairly small artery in our city. So. You say you're in Brighton? Brighton Estates, yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm on a non -port. Okay. Yeah. I think set in stone at this time, as far as I know. So. Yeah, as far as this board is concerned, we have had no proposals, no renderings, nothing has been brought before us. Okay. So we just, just saw it in the comprehensive plan, and we'd like yeah. to make sure that we get on the record sure. to say, I, A, I, I'd rather not have a road go through that park in the first sure. place. You guys do a great job maintaining it. It's a very valuable resource for our community. We have a path that comes over from Brighton States directly to it, and we use it every day. And, uh, and I use it in the winter, and I use it in the summer. And uh, and having that road go through there, I think, is a is a is a bad thing for the for the community, uh, just in general. I look at I look at what our neighbors to the north and Carmel do with their park systems, and it's a, it's the pride of their community. It's starting to become the pride of our community as well. And I hate to see the road go right through the middle of that park to begin with. If it does go straight through that park, I surely surely don't want it going right in my backyard, uh, uh, through our house onto a road that I think would be unsafe to dump more traffic out onto. Well, not not to play ignorance, but like I said, nothing's been brought before this board. Yeah. We appreciate your your time coming here tonight, raising these concerns. Obviously, if something's brought before us. I don't think it's. Uh, we'll definitely keep your concerns in mind. So motions would come to you before any work happens to put that road through the park. And Can't say for sure. It's because they sent us here to come. Sure, I understand. Here. Yes, but I think for the most part, something like that would have to be. And I'll maybe speak, I don't know, it really depends on the funding mechanism, before, in, you know, first step of it yeah. before it comes to us. Is that correct? I, I don't. The, the park property is needed if the park's full. Oh, that's yeah. where the park is. So the ultimate uh, decision maker for land alteration to that land, since it's your park, would be, you know, residing over sure. uh, As far as outside funding mechanism, that would have to be approved by whatever funding bucket that is coming from, whether it be uh, RDC or parks, you know, the bars are money mechanisms as well. So uh, to elaborate a little bit as well, this comprehensive plan, plan is it basically what's been drawn is an indicative line showing uh, potential thoroughfares going east and west, right? So Freedom Park historically, from the inception of Freedom Park, uh, when we fall Freedom Park, we got the initial master plan done over 18 years ago and has existing infrastructure in the ground already ready to accept yeah. for water is ready for the road to be built within the great park, right? So um, that entire park, its future, the way it's been master planned, it is intended to have a road to go through it to activate different zones in that park. Initially, it was a very large park. It's over an 80-acre park. It's now currently probably sitting over 120 acres now. Um, in order to activate all those recreational zones, you certainly need some sort of 
uh, vehicular and pedestrian thoroughfare to go through that park at a very reasonable, slow, safe speed, right? So you've got the dog park on the south, you've also got the multi-plane fields uh, to the west as well, and you have the pond uh, to the southwest, which is being uh, completely underutilized from a community aspect, or probably overutilized for private states, residents. So we want to make sure that we're serving all the community, it is a community park, and um, we're providing infrastructure there for the whole community to access this. Yeah, and, and I understood. I mean, I think I, what I'd like to just get on the record is that I would very much prefer that we think through the traffic patterns a little bit on those roads. Cutsinger is a small road as well, yeah. and Honey Creek is quite a small road as well. Yeah. There's already an incredible amount of traffic at the intersection yeah. of Cutsinger and Honey Creek every day. Uh, I, I know there's a there's a roundabout with a question mark on that comprehensive yeah. plan as well there. That would be a good idea, I think. Yeah. Uh, put that in there, but uh, just just want to go on the record to say that I think taking that road straight east west over yeah. to Honey Creek Road is yeah. a mistake. No pun intended, but we stay on our like we're parks, so we'll stay on our parks property. Yeah, I don't, we don't really get into infrastructure and roads. So, so you can see where we're frustrated because we got sent here by the sure. council. Sure. I, I just don't sure. know where, where we have a, a chance to voice our opinion. Uh, anything that happens in Street Park would be based on this board giving permission to utilize the land. Correct. Right. Yeah. Should the city council want to put a road through there, then there would be collaboration to have to happen. Yeah, so there'll be future at this point. There's no yeah. plan to put a road right. through. Right. Nothing's come before this board. We have, you know, personally, I haven't heard anything. Uh, but you know, it does keep an eye on the agendas. Yeah. Keep your ear on the ground. The process for Green Park now, so that'll be up to the yeah. 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 Okay, great. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We appreciate your time. Appreciate the opportunity to yeah. Thanks yeah. for coming. Of Anything else from the public? And the business from the park board. Uh, members should receive a copy of the claims in their packets, unless there's any additions or corrections, those will stand as presented. And if there's no other business coming before this board tonight, this meeting is adjourned.